I'm teaching the one gene, one protein hypothesis to a group of students who have to study it as part of their syllabus. It's a very difficult concept to teach and extremely tricky for students to grasp simply because it's so abstract. This lesson tries to grapple with some of these issues in a way that hopefully makes it easy to understand. Fantastic. How did you know to sit down then? What did you do? I just had to look and then look. Did you have any idea what I was doing when you came in? We were asking for our attention. Why did you think I was asking for your attention? I just looked at the thing and then I okay. saw you doing. So what's the word we could give to what I was doing? What was it? I was doing I was signaling in. Code. In a code, excellent, because this lesson is all about codes and the secrets that codes can hold within them, okay? Now the key to any code is knowing how to read it, read it decipher it. Once you can read a code, you can look underneath it and see what it's actually all about, or the secret message which is hidden within. Codes have been used for thousands of years. The ancient Egyptians used codes. The Nazis in the Second World War used a very famous code called Enigma. Today, we're going to look at a very special type of code. But before we do, we're going to have to use an analogy. It's like a comparison, OK? It's a comparison so then you can take that thing and compare it to the real one. The reason I'm using an analogy is because a concept we're trying to look at is so abstract and so difficult, it'd be hard just to go straight there, OK? So let's introduce another code. Let's imagine I had a code which was kept within a vault, OK? So imagine over here I had my vault just there. And the code is projected within the vault. Now, you can't take the code from the vault. Look, I can't get it. I can't get it, OK? But if I can remove that code from the vault and take it to my workshop, I might be able to decipher it. Could I have three volunteers, please? Up you come, up you come, up you come, quickly, and we go over to the vault. OK, have a look what we have there. Can you describe to the rest of the class, if you go into the vault for me, please, and describe to the rest of the class, what do we have in? What's our tools? Pegs. We have colored paper, we have some pegs, rope, yeah. and we have some rope. Now, they need to get that code to the workshop. Any suggestions how they could possibly do it? Yes, yeah, Sean. They should like get um, pieces of paper, the first put red. All right, that's a fantastic idea. Do you understand, Sean, what he said there? So if we had two of you holding the line out, OK, two of you hold the line out. OK, should we peg a red on them, please? OK, Eugenia, what would be the second colour we put on? Um, would it be red again? OK, let's put on red again. So what I'm going to ask you three to do now is, on your own, complete that colour code for me, please. So what we have actually done is made a what of the code? We've made a, a copy of the code. Very, very good. Now, once we have that copy, our job is to decipher it. We can do that in our workshop, OK? So remove your copy and go and stand behind the workshop for me, please, guys. Now, what we have over here is a supplier. Could I borrow two people, please, to quickly come up here for me? That's great. Here we have the supplier. Now, the supplier can supply the codes to the workshop. Could you hold up one of the blocks for me, please? Show them the colour code and describe to the workshop what you have there. What's on the back? One blue and two reds. Three colours on a code which corresponds to a part. Tony, could you just come up here for a second, please? Now, your supplier here has parts, OK? Yeah. You need to ask for the correct parts. Have a look at the code. It's a three-colour code that you have there. 
Okay. What do you think, Tony? What is the first part that you're going to ask for, please? They've got a three okay. color code. Red, red, blue. Red, red, blue. Okay. Laura, can you get a red, red, blue from the supplier, please, and take it to Tony for me, please? Very, very quickly. Tony, can you nominate a builder for you? Anybody? Any of you okay, want to check come the up? code. Do you want to come? Red, red, blue. Come then, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, quickly. Okay. Tony, check the code. Is that correct? Red, red, blue. Yes. Okay, give it to your builder. Emmanuel, can you start building in section nine for me, please? Section nine. Okay, Tony, next sequence. What's it going to be? Thank you, blue, Laura. Blue, yellow, red. Blue, yellow, red. Okay, thank you, Laura. Give it to Tony. Tony, can you check it for me, please? Blue, yellow, red, yep. Okay, correct. give it to your builder. That's your second part. Oh, yeah, Tony, quickly now, what's your third? Um, green, yellow, green. Green, yellow, green. Laura, can you take that over, please? Thank you. Green, yellow, green, yep. Check it. Okay, and give it to your builder. Okay, step back. Okay, the rest of the class. What do we have there, do you think? A car. The bit he just did? Is it a car, Emmy? A wheel. A wheel. A wheel. And a back bumper. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Do we have a full car there? No. What do we have? It's the front of the car. A part of the car. Okay. If we had a separate code, a second piece of code, maybe it filled the picture in for us, okay? So let's imagine we're going to do the second part of this sequence, okay? So we're going to do the whole thing again. As you can see, the code has changed. So, without interruption, guys, there you are. As fast as you can, off you go. Where do we go to? Where are we going? Workshop. Workshop. Fantastic. Round we go. Interpreter, do your stuff. Can I have a blue, yellow, red? Laura, take it over. Emmanuel, area five, please. Mm -hmm. And it's going to fit again, yellow, okay? Red. This one's going to be tricky. Tony, did you check that one? Yes. Okay, marvellous. What's next? Green, blue, yellow. Green, blue, yellow. Okay, Laura, take it over for me, please. Green, blue, yellow. Marvellous. And final piece. Tony. Green, blue, yellow. Red, green, red. Fantastic. Fantastic! Give her a round of applause. Yeah. That's what you call sharpish. Very good. Don't take a seat. Okay, mar marvelous. Do you want to sit down for me, please? Very, very quickly. Sit down. Well done, Manuel. Good work. Take a seat. Okay. Have a look at the diagram. What do you think we have? A car. Again, do we have a full car? No. No. We have parts of the car. Component parts of the car. Put that in your head, please. Component. Parts. Okay, now this color code coded for something quite insignificant, really. It was a car. But there are other codes which code for things which are far more important, far more complex. There is a code found within all of us, within our body, within every single living organism. A very special code. Does anybody know the name of it? Yes, Trisha? DNA. DNA, fantastic. Can you tell me anything about DNA? What do you know about DNA? Um, it's a long strand of molecule. Okay, it's a long strand of molecule. Where is it found within our body? Does anybody know? No. Yes. In our genes. It's in our genes. And where are our genes found within our body? Um, in like the cells. Which cells? Which cells are they found in? Yes, Emmanuel. All of them except the sexual cells. The gut, which is none of our sexual cells. Now it is in our sexual cells, but I got half of it. They got half them. Fantastic. Can I get it out? <laughs> yes, buddy. You can separate. Um, there's a way you can separate the DNA. Okay. Like, for example, with a banana, you could get the DNA out of a banana. Really? But, yeah. But I don't know. Like, you could do that. Well, I'm if not... I had a lab and a million pounds, then possibly I could actually separate the DNA out. I don't have a lab and I don't have a million pounds. <laughs> what I do have is a blender. Great. Now, Ooh, I've also been to the butchers and I have... <laughs> oh, my God. Some lovely, lovely samples of meat. So I'm going to have a lovely cocktail of thymus gland, which is found just there. And it's not human, no, I promise. I didn't kill anybody in the making of this program. And also some liver, OK? So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put it into the blender. Why do you think? <laughs> Why do you think I have to put it into a blender? Where's the DNA found, did we say? 
Yes, Melissa. You have to break it down yeah. so you can s separate the paste. Uh, yeah, very, very good point. I have to break it down so I can separate it, okay? Now, if I just turn the blender on now, what's going to happen? It's going to fly off. It's going to fly off. It's also going to be sticky, okay? So I'm going to dilute it with some water. So I'm just going to add a splash of water to my liver and thymus to make a sort of liver smoothie, okay? Very, very rich in iron. Very, very good for you. Okay, into that concoction, I'm also going to add a few other things. I've got some <coughs> detergent and I'm going to add just a little smidgen. Why do you think I need to add detergent? What's going to do? Yes, Martin. Separate whatever's left when you put it through a sieve. I have a feeling that that's the DNA. What? You're on the right lines, aren't you? You're yeah. on the right lines. Yes, Rebecca. Is it going to separate the fat? From like the You're a genius, you know that. It is. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the cell membranes are made up of fat, okay? They've m made up of fat. What's the detergent going to do to the fat? What does detergent do to fat? Break it Breaks it down. down very good. So we add a bit of detergent <coughs> to break it down. Also, I find a little bit of salt it helps in this as well, okay? So there we have a little bit of salt, about two <laughs> teaspoons. A little bit. A little there you bit. go. <laughs> All right. So it's looking good. Now then, what I'm going to do next is give that time to blend. So I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to switch it on. Ready, steady, <laughs> there we go. That's looking nice. That's looking nice. All right, so now we've blended the DNA mixture. We need to add one more ingredient. Now, DNA isn't found sort of just lying about inside the cells. It's raveled very, very, very tightly around proteins. Very tightly. So to get at the DNA, what we have to do is break down the protein. Now, can anybody remember what is the name of the enzyme which breaks down protein? Protease? Yeah. Protease, fantastic. It is called protease. And it just so happens I have some bacterial protease here. I have to be careful of this because it's a bit of an irritant. But I'm going to add a little bit of bacterial protease to this, okay? What it's going to do is going to break down here we are, the proteins which is holding the DNA together. <coughs> round and round and round we go. That's fantastic. That'll just take a couple of minutes to work. Now, can you see any DNA? No. No. That's because DNA is actually soluble in water, okay? It's soluble. What does soluble mean? It yes, Tony? It can dissolve. It can be dissolved, yes. Yeah. So what we have is the DNA which is dissolved in there, okay? Now, if I can show you what I've done earlier, just for clarity, here it is. Again, we still can't see the DNA, but the DNA is present in there. Now remember, remind me again, DNA is a found as what? Double a double helix, okay? So DNA is a double helix strand. They're all found within there. Now, what I have here is some alcohol. Very, very, very strong alcohol. Although DNA is soluble in water, it is insoluble in alcohol, insoluble. So what do you think I can do to get the DNA out of there? Yes, Sean. You pour it into the alcohol. Pour it into the alcohol. Very, yeah. very good. Or I could pour the alcohol into the, into the DNA. Yeah. Let's have a go at this. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. What we'll see are two separate layers. Yeah. In the second layer, hopefully, the DNA is going to separate out. and You'll see it either as some fluffy white pillows or hopefully some strands of DNA. Can you see any strands coming yet? Yeah. yeah. Can you? Yeah. yeah, look at that. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Eugenia, can you get me a cocktail stick out of there for me, please, very quickly? Look at that. Can you see it? Yeah. That is actually real DNA, which has been extracted from these thymus glands. So what I'm going to try to do is pull it out. Here it comes. Can you see it all pulling out? It's a bit like snot. But it's far, far more important than that because that in there contains all your genetic information, DNA. Okay, let's put that away. 